Hey folks, Nick here from another BookTube channel. Today, talking about some of my favorite science fiction movies. Nick, why are you talking about movies? This is another BookTube channel, not a movie channel. Uh, a couple reasons. One, uh, I was asked to. Uh, I did a chat with um, Gareth from Books, Songs, and Other Magic uh, the other day, and where I talked about my desert island uh, flicks, my the, the movies that I would take with me to a desert island, uh, and it was a really fun conversation. I highly recommend checking out that video on his page, but I had a lot of fun doing that, and he asked if I would do this video of like my top 10 science fiction movies ever. Uh, the other reason I'm making this video is I'm in a slight reading slump right now, uh, so I just I can't really think of a book video to make, but I got to keep putting the content out there. I want to make sure that there's something that's up on this channel for people to watch. So I hope you find this interesting. With that being said, we'll get into it. Uh, first thing to note is that, of course, this is a subjective list. Uh, this is not my list of what I think are the greatest science fiction movies of all time. These are my personal favorite movies, uh, personal favorite sci-fi movies of all time. Uh, th are there better movies that exist? Absolutely. But those ones I haven't watched multiple times. Those ones I haven't formed a personal connection to. Uh, so that's why these are my top 10 sci-fi movies. Um, uh, and th this is also, it's actually in no particular order. So saying it's my top 10, it just means like these are my amorphous top 10, you know, just scattershot. Um, I'm also going to give shout outs to movies that uh, that did not make the list that easily could have. Uh, Inception um, is great by Christopher Nolan. I actually rewatched that recently for the first time in like a decade and it holds up. It's still a great movie. Um, Terminator 2, which uh, I, I don't think I need to explain to most people. Um, Moon by Duncan Jones. Excellent movie. It's just been a long time since I've seen it. So I felt weird putting it in my top 10. Uh, and Jurassic Park, which was initially in my top 10, and then I kicked it out for something else. Um, but I love Jurassic Park. It's fantastic, uh, and it's a lot of fun. It's Spielberg at like his, his, some of his best uh, like action and uh, just thrills. So, yeah, you know, you know Jurassic Park. Um, I'm also going to keep Ghostbusters off of this list, even though Ghostbusters is technically a science fiction movie, in my opinion science fiction movie that is comedic it just didn't feel um it didn't feel right to include it here it didn't feel like it was in the right spirit of science fiction so yeah just uh, just keep that in mind i took that off uh but let's go ahead and jump in uh, and if you watch that um that chat i did with uh gareth you'll you may you may be disappointed by this list because i chose a lot of mainstream stuff like I, I did not go the very esoteric route i didn't go the film snob route uh, a lot of these movies you've probably heard of or, or seen maybe one of them you haven't um but the rest of them you're gonna see, it's gonna be very common border dare i say basic <laughs> um but you know it is what it is this first one might come out of left field uh very random but it's a galaxy quest by uh directed by Dean Parasant, I think. I'm not, I don't really know him as a director. All I know is that Galaxy Quest is such an incredibly fun movie. Uh, and I'm not even really a Star Trek fan. I know that the whole like premise of Galaxy Quest is what if the cast of a Star Trek type show was abducted and uh, had to take up the, uh, you know, be, do the real roles like in, re in reality to help an alien race. Um, uh, and the, the, the prep falls within uh, therein. Uh, but it's such a fun movie. It's so funny and it's so completely just rewatchable. That's why I put this on here is that this is a movie that I have rewatched, uh, probably a dozen times. It's just, <laughs> it's just delightful. It's a lot of fun. It's clever. It's a really smart movie. Uh, it's got a lot of great performances. Um, uh, uh let's see Sigourney Weaver, Sam Rockwell, uh, even Tim Allen, <laughs> you know, um, Tony Shalhoub, uh, Alan Rickman, great cast. Uh, it's, it's just great. It's just a fun movie. 
And so that's why I'm putting that on here. Next up that I'll talk about is A Clockwork Orange by Stanley Kubrick. Uh, very different from Galaxy Quest. Clockwork Orange is wonderful. Um, one of the uh, probably um, first movies that I had seen that uh, really drew, drew me towards Stanley Kubrick. Uh, he's now, you know, he's my favorite director. And I think A Clockwork Orange was the second movie of his that I had seen after The Shining. Uh, and I just think it's great. Um, I love its exploration of uh, just uh, free will or you know, the, the concept of having free will versus being programmed to be good. Uh, the just the uh, the moral dilemma of that, the ethical dilemma of that. I think it's handled really, really well. I think it's a striking movie. I think it's a controversial and disturbing movie. Uh, I just think it's a lot of uh, a lot of uh, maybe not a lot of fun is the right word. But it's interesting to, to watch and interesting to think about. Uh, and I, I just think that Kubrick just did a terrific job with it. I love his, his production design. I love the costumes. I love the music choices. Just just, just a great movie. Just, just terrific. Um, next up, uh, Aliens by James Cameron. I kept Alien off this list because I personally feel that Alien is more of a horror movie that happens to take place in space rather than being a science fiction movie. But the line there is really thin. I mean, if you disagree, that's fine. Uh, I, but I feel like Aliens is more sci-fi in to, to me. Uh, and it's just one of the best, one of the best sequels ever made. Uh, it's, it's just awesome. It's one of the best action movies ever made. This is one of those where it's like, I, I don't really know what to say to you because I'm sure you've heard it all before. Like everybody knows aliens. <laughs> uh, it's, it's, it's another one of those movies that I can watch endlessly. Uh, it's, I love, uh, cause I love the design of the xenomorph. I love the design of the ships. Um, I just think it's, it's all really terrific. Next up, I've got Ex Machina by Alex Garland. I would also like to give a special shout out to uh, his movie Annihilation, which I considered putting on here as well. But uh, when I just compare the two, I think Ex Machina is just more of a personal favorite. Although I do love Annihilation, which was a criminally underseen movie. Um, I think it's a movie that improves upon the book, the source material, uh, considerably. Um, but Ex Machina is just terrific. <laughs> uh, if you haven't seen it, um, this one... Maybe a little bit less mainstream, I guess. It, I mean, it, it was, I think, I don't know if it was his first movie, but it was definitely the one that got him attention. I don't know that it was hugely successful, um, but it's a, it's about a, a guy who is invited to like this tech billionaire's compound, this isolated compound to help him administer the Turing test to a like lifelike Android that he has created in, in the, uh, image of a beautiful woman um and it's uh it is it's great i love the kind of friendship and relationship that uh blossoms between the android and the uh the the just the the guy that's been brought up there to test her um i love how crazy oscar isaac is as the tech billionaire uh it's a it's a really wonderful movie really great uh and a great ending too that um I think we'll, I think it's a really surprising ending. I'm not going to say anything about it, but I think it's a really just really expertly crafted movie. Uh, something completely different on the sci-fi horror end of the spectrum. Uh, Reanimator by Stuart Gordon. This is a bit of a comfort movie for me. This is like a movie that if I have time to kill, if maybe I'm not feeling great, throw it on. And I just love it. I, I love so I, I really appreciate some good practical horror makeup and effects from the 80s. Reanimator contains some really great, disgusting gags. Uh, the <laughs> Even though a lot of them are cheesy, like with the, 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 the head that's being carried at like the stomach height, um, like it's obvious like what they're doing. But I, I, I love like shoestring filmmaking. I love... Uh, when people just get have to get creative because of they know their limitations and just doing what they can and allowing you to overlook those shortcomings because you could just feel the earnestness and uh, behind the filmmaking. That's what I that's what I feel when I watch Reanimator. It's like these are a bunch of people 
who are really passionate about this, uh, who are having fun making a fun product. So um, that that's just one of the reasons this this really speaks to me. Similar to like the Evil Dead movies, like Evil Dead One and Two in particular. Uh, they're not sci-fi, so I didn't include them on here, but that just like that spirit of filmmaking, I feel like, is so alive in Reanimator. Uh, so that's why it's it's one that I f- uh, frequently just constantly go back to. Uh, this next one is the only one here that might be a little esoteric. That might be that it's definitely outside of the mainstream of Western media, uh, and that is Stalker by Andre Tarkovsky. This is probably the newest addition to this list for me because I it, I only saw this movie for the first time a few months ago, but it instantly became something that I uh, I knew. Like I, I went I went and bought the Criterion Blu-ray like instantly after I was done watching it because I knew this was one I would want to revisit again and again. It is this is not a movie for everybody. It's very slow. It's very methodical. It's only, almost three hours long. It's in Russian. Uh, and it is it, it's about these three men who go into like a radioactive wasteland because within it there is a building with a specific room where if you make a wish in that room it comes true uh but it is it is not an eventful movie it is very much an emotionally driven one a character driven one uh and it doesn't have like that big climactic finale that a lot of people look for in movies uh in general um there's no action scenes in this there's there's nothing. It's all contemplative, and but the but the ending is so impactful because if you've been paying attention for the previous two and a half hours, just the, the resonance of the decisions that get made in the finale uh, is it's it's really wonderful. Uh, it's it's a it is a great movie. It's also a movie that killed like half the people that worked on it because they actually filmed in radioactive like territory. Um, and they actually had to film it twice because the film got destroyed. Uh, like the the when they got they they shot like most of the movie. They went to develop it and it developed wrong. So they had to go back and do it again in that radioactive, real radioactive wasteland. Um, so the behind the scenes stuff of that movie is just as wild and interesting as the actual content. So yeah, Stalker is great. Um, something a bit more mainstream. Uh, Robocop. Robocop by Paul Verhoeven is every bit as good as uh, you've been led to believe and even better, honestly, because a lot of people, I think, write it off. A lot of people that haven't seen it, I think, write it off as just like a stupid action movie about this robot cop. Um, And that's not what it is at all. It is a great uh, movie about capitalism. Uh, (laughs) uh, It is just like Paul Paul Verhoeven is a great satirist. uh, And Robocop is one of the smartest movies you'll ever see, and it's hidden behind this facade of sci-fi action, uh, like nonsense. And because of everything that came after it, like the, the cartoon or the action figures, that also has contributed to people forgetting that the original Robocop movie is like brilliant and like it's so smart, it's and it's so good. Uh, so I couldn't not put it on here. And while I'm talking about Verhoeven. Starship Troopers is also on this list. Uh, I love Starship Troopers. I love that he almost didn't want to make it because he thought it was fascist garbage. Uh, And then he ended up making it to point out how horrible and stupid fascism is. Uh, And I think it's one of the best anti-fascist, anti-war movies ever made. Uh, And it's, again, about goons fighting bug aliens. You know, it's easy to overlook the messaging in this movie uh, when you don't really read it, when you don't look into it and consider it. Um, it, it this is another one that I, I can throw on at any time and, and be engaged and be happy to be watching it. Okay, so that is eight. Uh, and the last two I'm going to go through really quickly because if you watched that uh, chat that I did with uh, Gareth, I mentioned both of these movies in that. The first one is The Thing by John Carpenter. It is. Uh, one one of the best horror movies ever made. One of the most suspenseful movies ever made is a masterpiece of uh, practical makeup and effects by Rob Bottin. Um, It it is a, 
it, it is the blueprint for every paranoia movie or TV episode made since then of like one of us is not who they say they are. It is flawless. Uh, it, it is a movie that I have watched many times and still am impressed by every time I see it. The body horror is exceptional. Uh, it's just terrific. Uh, so yeah, The Thing by John Carpenter. And then finally, uh, this one is my number one movie of all time, my personal favorite, and that's 2001 A Space Odyssey by Stanley Kubrick. Uh, for all of the reasons I said in that chat with Gareth, but uh, it is uh, so carefully planned. The visual effects by Douglas Trumbull are something that in 1968 is still trying to be replicated by movies today. Looks absolutely incredible. Incredible, uh, and it is a challenging movie, but it's not an impossible movie. A lot of people say, "I don't know what happened. Like, I don't get it. What's going on here?" It's all there. All of, all of the information is there. You can form your your conclusions from a lot of evidence present in the text. Uh, it's not an impossible movie. It's not like uh, you know. It's not like there's no answer. The answer is there. You just have to be paying attention to uh, to see it, um, and so. Uh, if you've tried 2001 in the past and you've given up because it was too slow, too boring, I encourage you to try again and really just like lock in, pay attention because it is it is so carefully made. It's so deliberate. It's a slow burn. But what it has to say about the advancements of humanity or rather the advancements of technology that decrease our humanity over time is something that is uh, still very relevant today, getting more and more relevant as we uh, drop more ridiculous, stupid things like those goggles that Apple's coming out with where you can like interact with your hands. Like, oh God, <laughs> it's so stupid. Um, but yeah, we're just, it's a, it's a great movie. It's a prescient movie. It's an, it's an important movie and it's a fantastic movie. So yeah, that's my list of 10 movies, my 10 favorite sci-fi movies. Let me know if you've uh, seen these, what your what your thoughts on any of them are. Let me know what your uh, top 10 sci-fi movies are in the comments. Would love to hear them. Again, if your movie didn't make my list, it's not that I didn't like it. It's just that maybe it's not something I have a personal connection with, or maybe I just haven't seen it. So, yeah, let me know, because I would love to see it. Uh, but thank you very much for spending some time with me today. For now, it's time to get back to reading.